Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Starfield on a Starfield Saturday, I believe. I'm your host, Colors Fade, and it's episode four. We're here at the lodge with Vasco, and what we need to do is go talk to this person. I cannot wait to meet him. It's been ages since Constellation has had someone new. I wonder what he's like. Just go easy on him. Being interrogated by a kid ain't exactly the best way to make a first impression. I'll limit it to the really important stuff, Dad. This does not bode well. And you must be the latest poor fool to get dragged into our dysfunctional little family. And you must be Sam Coe, the Free Star Collective expert. Whoa. I know a few dark sides of the Aquila moons, but if you're looking for deep history lessons, well, I'm going to fall asleep before you do. Trust me. Don't encourage him. Koriko, by the way. Hi, hi. <laughs> Good to meet you, Cora. Nice to meet anyone brave enough to fly the frontier. Know a thing or two about spacecraft, do we? Hey, don't spook our new friend. Frontier's a fine ship. Honest. Now, let's talk business. Sarah tell you about the expedition? Only that it was in Free Star Collective space. Sure enough, that's where we're heading. The three of us are heading to Aquila, for a settled planet of the Free Star Collective, and, not coincidentally, the home of their capital, Aquila City. We'll land in the city's spaceports, but the frontier is our goal. It's a rough country, spawned a lot of stories. And I got a lead on a tale that um, makes me think one thing. Artifact. Let's get to it then. Okay, we'll meet you on board your ship. Talk more when we get there. Once we land on Aquila, it's gonna be you and me. So if you want to do any freewheeling before then, Cora and I will just be riding passenger. Yes. Cora is an adorable kid. Smart, likes books. I was all ready to get book nerdy with her, but hey, unfortunately, Got a second? even though it mm -hmm. seems like there's a quest I'm set up for her, Captain. there's not. You have your own company? Big missed opportunity. One thing I want to do is take a look at my character here real quick. See, what are we doing for ballistics? Unlock this rank. Yeah, ballistic weapons. Wait a minute. So what are we doing? We don't have any challenges going on with that. Okay, cool. We need to get that. Research methods. Craft 10 unique food, drink, drugs, weapon mods, or equipment mods. I'm going to make a note to you all about this. Uh, the game knows secretly to itself buried in the code which items you've made already when it counts for unique mods and things like that for that first challenge in particular but it doesn't say that on the user interface so my recommendation is to have an excel spreadsheet and just mark which things you've actually built so you don't waste components building the same thing again and not getting the uniqueness part taken care of now here it says craft yeah craft 10 unique food drink drugs weapon mods or equipment mods so we're mostly going for weapon mods here and we may try to dabble in some um some space suit design but here's the thing I'm guessing that you're going to be around level 50 when you finish the game at least that's what I've seen from reports from other people and that means there's only so many points to go around. There is a character builder online, and I'm going to link to that in the description below. And the character builder is awesome. And you will see that if you try to build things out a certain way, you're going to run out of points really fast. So I have not planned to do any space to space suit design. I have not planned that into my build. So I probably will. I'm mostly going for uh, weapon mods right here in weapon engineering. So, yep. So we got to wait, of course. You can't do that until you put four points in here. We're going to put points in the research methods. Um, we're also going to want to put one point into scanning later. Security. Can attempt to hack advanced locks. We need to pick five locks, though, before that's available. So let's go do our ballistics and put a point into this so that we can start doing more damage. And then we need to kill 50 enemies. That'll work. You must own a lot of things. Do you have a favorite? All right, so we should be light enough here, but we do need to get rid of some stuff. We'll get rid of some things in Aquila City. 
So let's look at where we need to go. You can go, the, the menu system here can be a little bit of a hassle, but emptiness to travel to Aquila City. So let's see that. We can also, since we're right here, we could go talk to Vladimir real quickly. So why don't we do that? Let's see, where are you, Vladimir? We gotta get you a little bit further out and go to the eye. We'll go talk to him really quick because it doesn't get take long to talk to him. So where is the eye? It's right over here. It's their little space station. Where Vladimir uses the telescope of this thing to find these power surges for you. This is part of the, the very pretty part of the game. And this is why I feel like it's just a big missed opportunity for them to make a seamless universe because it would be so cool to fly from one planet to the next and the different random things that could have popped up along the way. Random things still do pop up, but since they're always when you fast travel to a location, it doesn't have the same grandeur to it. We got a rook on deck. Good to see Constellation getting some fresh blood. Good to meet you, Vladimir. Glad you two finally have a chance to meet. Wish I could have been down at the lodge to see the artifacts come together. But I got a little lost peeking through the eye. <laughs> so here is something that I'm only going to point out this one time because you're going to see this throughout the whole game. This is just something that particularly drives me nuts about this particular game that Bethesda has made is so often the obvious response is not there. So you're given three choices. Someone should have grabbed you. It was incredible. Or that happens to me too. I get lost in something and lose time. Or peeking through the eye. More pirate talk. The obvious choice here is to say, oh, that's, it's too bad you missed it. You know, and it's like, I mean, this is the closest response to that. But there are even more egregious examples of this later on where the thing that I naturally as a human being would have said to this person is if you not don't want to talk, a response. We don't have to. And it's just kind of. It's kind of nutty, in my opinion. It's it's kind of startling. Like, what kind of people were doing the writing for the game? That the obvious choices just didn't show up. <laughs> Probably would have just gotten annoyed at being bothered. I'll catch a smile at our next big revelation. You know there's more to come. Now, this station, the Eye, rigged up for deep space scans. Barrett and Sarah teased out the signs of where our artifacts could be hiding after we caught our second one. But the data takes a slow ride along the Sea of Light. Years or decades between us and the fringes of space without a grav drive. And I want to go back to what he was saying earlier with the responses that we had. Our, the response that I chose was somebody should have grabbed you. I would have never said that to this person because I understand that they have a job on this space station that they're doing. So my response would be, oh, that's too bad you missed it. Too bad somebody couldn't have sent you like, you know, a video of it or something. But instead, the, just the most obvious option wasn't there. It's really weird. Okay. I've lost you. Understood, I need to check on these leads in person. You won't be the only constellation out there. Andresia and Matteo are both following up on scans themselves. Mateo went out recently, but Andreja, it's been a while. Hate to pull the worried old man act on you, but I'm an old man and I'm worried. I'll keep an eye out. Yes, indeed. Stop worrying so much, Vladimir. If she's out there, we'll find her. She should be at one of the two sites I've marked on your star map. Can take care of herself, but... We all need backup sometimes. Anyway, hopefully you'll be catching Fortune's smile and we'll have some more artifacts to take a closer look at. Happy hunting. 
Andreja Show the words another time then. Is the best companion in the game. Probably because, in my opinion, she at least has some predilection for doing slightly illegal things. Like, she doesn't have a problem using violence, which this game is very violent. So, this is something I like, though. Depending on which seat, which side of the seat you are when you enter, it will, it will correctly so, do the uh, right or left side month, of the seat. Did you explore that system I asked about? I was expecting a report. Well, I meant to, but then I caught an SOS and it nice. led Clean to this set, whole then. goose chase. So, did you do it? No, I mean, I meant to, but then it became this whole thing. An ambassador was involved. <sighs> How about I just assign it to someone else, then? That, uh... That may be best. Sarah is a real... singular-minded person. I don't want to call her a one-dimensional character, <laughs> but she's very much... on one path. Okay, so now we can do this. Go at Aquila City. That'll be great. Let's go there. It's in the Cheyenne system, and we can't quite make the jump, so we gotta go to Olympus first. It takes a while for the grab drive to spin up unless you want to reallocate all of the energy points, the reactor points, into it, and then it fires off in like a second. Smooth jump. Nice work. So then there's this thing, the Algamist, and if you hail it, you can see that there's absolutely nothing going on. So the question is, what's on it? There are all these kinds of locations in the game where you're like, hmm, what's there? If you hail them and nobody answers, then it's either abandoned or they're spacers. But maybe we should go see, huh? Besides, if there's some loot here, that'd be great. We'll pick it up, take it with us before we go to Aquila City. Be a good idea. Docking cycle complete. I think that's why it's put there specifically is because it's they know that you can't get all the way to Aquila City in one jump so you have to stop here so they put this here let's see we don't have an XP bonus I can't remember much about this see. this is I think this is a completely abandoned facility but I might be wrong about that But first, we're going to get rid of some stuff. Let's see. We have two helmets. Constellation Space Helmet. Oh, it's a better helmet, isn't it? Also, that one looks so cool, though. But yeah, it's a better helmet. Okay, we should equip that one and send that one to storage. We have a space suit, a Constellation Space Suit, which has a lot of physical damage. Wow. I'm still going to send it away. I'm going to wear the ecliptic one for now. Then there's this stuff. Berserker Modified Grendel does more damage less armor when it has. No, we don't want that. Cornered Suppressed Calibrated. Damage increases as health decreases. It's got a suppressor on it. Okay, Crippling Combat Knife. We'll never use We'll never use combat knives. Now, those of you who have watched my channel forever know certain things happen on this channel. You know that when we're playing XCOM, we miss 95% sniper shots. You know that when we're playing Battletech, we take an inordinate amount of head wounds and face plant shots, and we know that we miss a lot of sniper shots. The dice hate me. Well, there is another way that the dice also hate me, and it will show up in this game. When we get a chance to get rare items or legendary items, we will get bladed weapons. We will not get really cool guns. We will get blades and melee weapons that I will never use. So just be aware of that. 
There's all these Grendels and all these Maelstroms and a modified Grendel with a short barrel and a modified Grendel with a long barrel. So now we have this. So this is the cornered, suppressed, calibrated Grendel. And then we have the Med Grendel. Chance that humans drop extra med paths on death plus 20% damage against robots. Okay, we're going to get rid of this one then. We're going to hang on to these things. Let's go, my friend. Oh, what the hell place is this? Oh, God. Okay. I know what this is. This is... <laughs> well, get ready for some spacers. Yep. Here we go. Oh, brother. Where art thou? What are my weapons again? <laughs> <laughs> I've got the med Grendel. Okay, there's the cutter at the coachman. That'll be useful. Anti-personal rattler. Oh, yeah, that's plus 10 against humans. Okay. Oh, boy. Well, this is kind of cool. Gotta go down here. This is a luxury resort. Zero G. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Damn it. Oh, I'm hit. Yeah, we're all gonna be hit because this is really tough to do. To get in here at first. It's really hard. <laughs> you picked the wrong day to piss me off. <laughs> okay, let's do this. Let's get some aid here. I don't need O2 because we are in a zero G chance. Let's use up a bunch of the food. So we just took some hits. What I'm looking for here is anything that's going to do damage resistance. So here's damage resistance. This is a heart plus. That's what we want. Okay. Get down here. Goodbye. Okay, she got one of them. Oh, Spacer Punk. Where's this guy? They're dying slowly. Show me what you've got. That'd be nice. <laughs> center mass, center mass. guys down I forgot about this place this is pretty cool you're through get up here where is he you're around or something there's a bunch of them oh there you are Get him. Kill him. Yeah. Oh, God, he ran. You're a damn joke. Who's shooting at me now? Get you. Where are you? Dead people everywhere. <laughs> this will take a little while to loot, won't it? Let's do this. Where are they at? Little well, surprise for you. Where is this punk? In there somewhere? Can't be, that's the tunnel. Where are they at? Up here? 
Where are they, Sarah? Find them for us. Now they're off our radar altogether. Okay, let's start looting. So this is a really interesting little quest here. Might as well take what we can. Might as well take care of it. Read the secret outpost sleep. So yeah, this gets you the mantis quest, which is really cool. Secret outpost. Loyal to your crew, I get it. But screw that. Big borrow still kill to get to Dinabola 1B. There's a secret outpost we're trying to crack. Once in a lifetime opportunity. You will regret it for the rest of your life if you don't get your ass over here. That is the Mantis quest line. Get you the Mantis ship and the Mantis spacesuit, and it's all awesome. For sure. So in here. Some lock picking, advanced locks, master locks. Here's the in game loot. Extended mag, boosted, calibrated mag. Okay, calibrated maelstrom. Nice. So weapons. Let's talk about this real quick. Weapons come in four grades. They're basic, calibrated, refined, and advanced. So calibrated being better than basic means it should do more damage. So here is a modified maelstrom. Oh, but it's um, not automatic. I don't think that here's the, this one is long barrel, medium scope, tactical grip, large magazine, and semi-automatic and does 26 physical damage at a 60 fire rate. This one's fully automatic, so you can't really compare them. But anyway, this is a better weapon for sure. So that's nice. So it's a calibrated weapon. That's good. That's the thing you want to pay attention to more than the whole legendary status thing. You want to pay attention to whether it's calibrated, refined, or advanced. Nova Galactic permanently reduces fuel needed for a grab jump by 1%. 1% is 1%, I guess. So critical reviews. These experts below are unacceptable and need to be redacted. This is a disaster. I need you to get in contact with all publications and get this rectified. This latest attempt at the ultimate tourist attraction in space, a zero-G casino that hopes to keep the drinks flowing and the credits rolling, ultimately feels like antiquated entertainment from the dimming lights of our ancestral city of sin. <laughs> so... Somebody didn't like it. But the jackpot combination is 12, 19, 36, and 5. So now we just have to find the jackpot. And I will show you why this was one of the most infuriating places that I visited during my first playthrough. So you can see all of these floating 0G slot machines. And some of them say system error. And I thought for sure one the of these panels in here. If we could find the missing numbers, right. we'd be able to win the jackpot for S ourselves. So I, she makes that that statement right there, and it makes you think that one of these machines is functional, but it's not. I I spent I'm not kidding. I spent an hour looking around, trying to find the machine that was functional, and I couldn't. And I went back and forth, and I made a hand drawn map of the whole place. So that I could make sure that I wasn't missing anything. And no, that comment she made is is incorrect. None of those machines work. None of them anywhere in the facility work. You actually have to find something else. So you have to find something completely different. So right now we just want to loot some people. There's also, let's see, this other side down here. If we can get in there. This is, oh yeah, this has got the, this is the one we were in. There's another side to this. Can we, do we have the ability to crack those locks? No. But we have security. You can attempt to hack advanced locks. Okay, and we have two more locks that we have to crack, I believe. Yep, two, we were three of five, so let's crack a couple of advanced locks here. Digipix. So that'll get you in there, and then you would need two, but there isn't one that's going to work for that. Nope, too wide. So that's not going to work. So here, this has obviously got to go on the next level. If it went there, that would work for it. In which case, this would be the correct one for the second. I'm looking at this, the inner ring lock there. 
So if you did that one at the inner ring lock. And that one. That covers it, which means that all the rest of these are available from this level. She could do that and then this and then that and then this. There you go. So sometimes it works better to work from the inside, especially when you don't have the blue color yet to help you differentiate. So a zero G gimbal for 2.8 mass. I'm going to leave that behind. Let me know your way around the lock. Well, honey, if you'd let me, I'd unlock you too, but you're all business. She's an impossible character to romance. Not that I ever care about that kind of stuff, but there's a nice XP bonus. So over here, what do we have? We got three on the next layer. So if you did, that won't work. That will work there, which means you need something to bridge those two gaps over here. So you'd need that. So this and this work for the second layer. So this means we got to use this there and that there. Perfect. Done. And now we're ready for the next level. We got a med pack and a modified arc welder. We're only grabbing it for the cash. We can't do a master lock yet. Alright, so then there's... Yeah, there's nothing in there. So now we're gonna go back down to here. This level. And down in here, Looks there's a couple like of things. Looks like spaces have dug in around here. Yeah, they had, but guess what? Red Harvest Spaghetti. Rag mines, though. I'll take those. A dish rag. Okay, now we can go over here. And down to the next zero G layer. Holster deep mining space suit. What does that do? Holstered. It's got better physical resistance. Beast Hunter. Minus 15 damage from aliens. You'll want to hang on to that. We're going to want that for later. Weapons weigh less. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and then I was all like following that beeping around because I thought that beeping had to be for something. But it's not. I got a guy in here somewhere. Where is he? Over here. We knew it was here somewhere. Let's give him the up close and personal treatment. Oh, she killed him. Oh, and he's got something legendary on him. If I could get over here to see what it is. So he's got an elemental calibrated solstice. A legendary laser pistol. Unfortunately, I don't use laser pistols, so that's what it is. It's a legendary berserker. Does more damage, less armor when it has radioactive damage, elemental. I mean, it'd be nice if it was a ballistic weapon, but it isn't, so we won't bother with it. There's nothing we can do about that. It's the randomness of the loot. Now, I was on my way over here to check this. It's a Grendel ammo. Okay, now we want to go back this way it's quite the place cheers to decadence so now you want to go down here and right there is a hole which is easy to miss and doesn't mesh with her dialogue that she spoke about. If we could just find the one. So here is some contraband. Oh boy. How much are these things worth? Hmm. Met components. How much is that stuff worth? I think you need to get rid of some of that gear. No. 
So here's the jackpot terminal. Input the jackpot combination, which was 12, 19, 36, and 5. So we got 3,700 credits from it. Doesn't seem like much of a jackpot. I was expecting more like 30,000, but. Empty beer bottle. And a notepad. So that's all there is to that place. Fun. Killed a few space airs. Then you gotta know how to get the hell out of here. Alright, so. How do we get out of here? I always forget this part. Because <laughs> that's the tunnel where you came in on. Okay. So the tunnel where you came in on, and it's down in that direction. Okay. I think it's like this. Exit, it says. Yeah. Oh, and there are more guys here. Did we miss some of these? We didn't loot all of these, did we? Nope. He's got a disassembler coachman. He's got some cases. Uh, I see spaces are infesting this place. Lovely. Not anymore. They're all dead because, you know, because we're badass. There we go. Here's the out. What's that? Drink pack or something. Sparkling water. So now you gotta come in through here. Not this way. And we're done. Picked up some loot. Okay, we got contraband, and that's gonna potentially be a problem. So let's see how we want to do this here how's our cargo hold it's 318 of 450 okay well we're going to store this and this and that and some weapons obviously we don't, we're not going to use that a disassemble coachman wow damage against robots that'd be great if there were places where you actually could fight a lot of robots but they pretty much don't come up so there's one or two places I found on the surface of planets where there'll be some particular factory or something. And it'll have robots, but they're far and few between. Time to get back to the world, eh? Yes, there is. All right, we have contraband. Let's see about getting it somewhere. So we were on our way to Aquila. Undocking complete, Captain. But there is a place we can go to. It's not there. It's in a place called the Wolf System. Right there. So this is where you want to take your contraband when you find it. Oh, we're, uh, oh, we do have grab drive. Okay. The game has this habit of reallocating your power after you grab make a jump grab jump. Complete. Yeah, see, it's no longer there and I got to reallocate it. I don't know why it does that. But anyway, scan this planet. Deserted relay station, you know there'll be pirates there. Where we want to go is the den. So this place will not have patrollers ready to patrol you and scan you for contraband, which is really nice. So then you can just come straight out to the den. Drop your contraband off. Sell it to the trade authority. Which again, I just find is really strange. I'm surprised there wasn't 
more design work done on like criminal syndicates and stuff nice clean so Captain. that where you actually had to go to sell contraband would be to take it to a criminal you boss. You did a hell of a job piecing the station back together after the Serpent's Crusade rolled through. Yes, they pieced it together. All right. Well, this station seen better days. I wonder if the UC will ever fully restore it to its former glory. That's exactly your problem. You don't think. If you weren't such a lousy reporter, you wouldn't be stuck all the way out here. I mean, I guess maybe that's true, but uh, if so, you're just as stuck out here as I am. So what does that say? Oh, wow. You really do want me to kick your ass, don't you? All right, that's enough. Bastion, go cool off. Get a drink. Whatever. Fine. Holden, I appreciate that you have a job to do. I really do. But you need to consider that you don't operate in a vacuum. If you're stationed here long term, that means you're around these people all day, every day. And they're not going to like it if you're making them look bad. Lieutenant Commander Marquez, I appreciate your concern, but I have an obligation to SSNN to report on what I see. I'm sure they do know that, Holden. I'm just saying, maybe use a little more discretion in your reporting. Maybe a lot. Don't worry. When the next big story breaks out here, I'll be sure to help you get the scoop, okay? I will think on that. Thank you. So, the SSNN. The SS News Network. Ah, Bethesda. I just, you just don't seem to think about things very much. Ah, a new customer. Welcome. Welcome to the Trade Authority. I'm Marcel, and if there's anything, anything I can do for you, please do let me know. Our you... stock may not be as vast as New Atlantis or Sidonia, but I will do my best to see that you leave here satisfied. Can... And seeing as the Trade Authority is the only fully licensed operator for the den, I'm afraid your alternatives are, shall we say, slim. It is a pleasure to make your acquaintance, and I hope this and all future interactions are profitable for both of us. It'd be great if you'd turn around to talk to me. The game does this, and I don't understand why. Certainly. Oh, <laughs> uh, what cracks me up about this game is that it is fun. I do like the game loop of the exploration, the quests, and especially the combat and building ships is fantastic. But there are people defending this game as if it's flawless. And I'm like, man, if you just play a few hours of it, you will see weird bug after weird bug. It's amazing. All right, let's sell our stuff. We're going to go to miscellaneous. So these things are worth quite a chunk, which is nice. So that's worth 8,000. I will take that any day of the week. Now, we're going to not make... He's down to 3,500 credits. So what we'll do is we'll go buy from him. He's got some digipigs. We'll buy those. We also want ammo that he's got. So what we want is caseless 11 millimeter. Just because we don't have guns right now that can that can use it doesn't mean we're not going to need it later. It's it's one of the more popular ones you need to get. <laughs> and then 7.77 millimeter caseless if you don't have enough or you want to get more stockpile. These are also good, but right now I want to see what I can make money-wise first. I don't like to leave them with a lot of money. I like to drain them to zero. So we're going to go back and sell. Go back to our miscellaneous. We're going to sell these things, get this contraband off of our hands and now we can start selling weapons from our inventory and spacesuits so the star room of spacesuit let's get rid of that one the constellation spacesuit let's get rid of that one we're going to keep this one for later for beasts because we're kind of going to need that navigator pack star room pack helmets sell that apparel Let's see, Space Rogue Outfit, let's sell that, and then the weapons. Alright, the coachman can go. This thing can go. Disassembler coachman, yeah, that can go. We're not going to shoot robots very often. Crippling combat knife can go. Cornered, suppressed, calibrated Grendel. 
I kind of want to keep that one. I have to switch that one. Oh, here we go. Bunch of Grendels. Bunch of Maelstroms. He's down to 600. Okay, now let's go buy some more stuff from him. Let's go buy some of this ammo. The 7.77. 7. Yeah, for 4 grand. Great. Because we got enough modified Grendels now. And modified Equinoxes to get most of that money back. There we go. All right. We pretty much tapped him out and us out. We can sell a bunch of these different things, but I'm going to hang on to them for now. Yeah, for now, let's do that. Okay. And we're at a mass of 75. So up to 50,000 credits. That's nice. And we got some more ammo. I really do should have a talk when you have the time. Yes, she wants to talk. Thanks for taking the time to talk. I wanted to ask you about the artifact you found on Vectera. When you pulled it from the rock, held it in your hands for the first time, how did you feel? Mm, well, I had visions. I heard sounds and music. It's difficult to describe. I don't know why it's difficult to describe. That's exactly what it was. That's not difficult to describe. <laughs> no, no, I, I don't think you understand. I know about the visions, the light, and the music. How did you feel inside? What were your thoughts? Mm -hmm. Let's see. It was being like being instantaneously pulled across the entire galaxy. Oh my goodness. That must have been terrifying. When it comes to the artifacts, it never ceases to amaze me how the science, well, simply fails. <laughs> I'm sure there's a perfectly rational explanation for them. If there is, the artifacts are doing a heck of a job hiding it. The artifacts are so different, so alien, and I'm certain one of them reached out and spoke to you. Quite the mystery. She talks about the artifacts doing a good job of hiding it, hiding the facts from us. But guess what? That's how everything in science has worked. For decades, we looked for the top quark. I remember reading about that when I was in college and I was like, they'll find it someday. They'll figure it out. Now we, we still don't understand things and we try to come up with nebulous explanations for things to make sense of our universe. We've come up with these words that we still can't quite define what the meaning is of things like dark matter and string theory. And we have this tenuous grasp on what quantum physics really means. And it's, it's all okay? part of the process of trying to understand our universe. Everything appears hidden, but if you keep digging and keep applying the scientific process, the answers do keep coming. Well, there's a solution to all this out there, somewhere. Is there? After spending years gathering data about the artifacts, you'd think I'd have all the answers. I don't know about that. I mean, we still don't understand the universe right now. How long is it going to take us to understand anti-gravity and what dark matter really is? And how long is it going to take us to fully understand quantum physics? I don't know. Why would you expect one person to have all the answers? Well, let's see. What sort of data have you gathered? Not much, I'm afraid. All I have to show for my efforts are eyewitness accounts, scores of inconclusive metallurgical test results, and wild theories. The whole experience must be incredibly frustrating for you, then. If you expect all the answers right away. Frustrating? No. Bewildering? Yes. It would be... Oh, well, an explorer's dream to solve a mystery like this. Well, we'll get to the bottom of this mystery together. I knew I picked the right person for the job. Look, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to talk. And for keeping an open mind. And I also wanted to say, well, 
I'm pleased we're on this journey together. <laughs> it's the best decision I've made in quite a long time. It's such an odd story and a way to tell this story. Just one quiet day. Is that too much to ask for? So, where to next? It's mostly just a really odd way to tell the story. That's what I think. Probably because they really wanted to shoehorn religion into this whole thing. I don't know. Maybe maybe Todd Howard is like a devout Christian or something, but... Pressure normalizing. Undocking complete. That whole angle just really bothers me because I would have liked to have seen the game just be... I would have liked to have seen the story told more through a purely scientific process. You know, so that some of the dialogue answers that you could give to these characters would just... The obvious answers would be there. The obvious replies would be available. It's like... It's it's a scientific mystery. We'll figure it out. Let's keep forging ahead. Instead of all of this other... Weird answers. Weird answers. Weird responses. Not the way I would have written it. Alright. Now... Where we need to go. Back up onto the galactic map. Where are we going? We need to go here. Oh no, that's the... <laughs> no, we don't want to go there yet. That's the wrong quest. <laughs> that's the Mantis quest. I don't want to do that right now. I want to go to Aquila City. Right there. Cheyenne, baby. We've gotten rid of our contraband. So we're ready to go. And this is the way I'm going to approach the game. Because this is the way I approach everything that I play. I said at the beginning, I'm going to talk about the things that I really love about it. And I am going to talk about the things that I don't love. And nice I'm job. going to be critical well, about it. Because this Retain game could have been better. Okay, now th here's something that I, that I did Enjoy love. That City Air. Here's something I do love, and you'll see it on the map. When you're out here, well, let's go, let's exit first of all, and come back to the map. It's quicker that way. You scan the planet, see all this stuff. And what's neat is when you get back to the system level, you can see all these, they've got all the planets, and then all their mo moons are, are notated by little dots. And when you hover over them, they light up. And what's really cool is when you scan one of these planets, they turn that gray color. So we've got, which one? This is Aquila City. And so it's green now. They're either gray or they're green or they're some other color, but they're not this, they're not um, unfilled in, for instance. So if we go to Kodos, which we haven't scanned yet, we're just gonna set course there real quick. This is inter-system flight here. You've taken down their shields. Oh, geez. Well, we're going to get a little bit of fighting first, then. Ground drop down. We can't jump. That one. I'm going to... Let's get in there. Get a, get a lock. Lock, Here lock, lock. Ground drive. Okay, you turkeys. Enemies weapon system. Enemies shields are back online. Yeah, I know my ship's hull's integrity is low, but grab jump shield system. Okay, I tried to fly to a different planet to show how this works, but it wasn't going to let me do it. So anyway, the point is. As you hover over the planets and the moons, which is kind of really cool, it'll show you up here how the dots change. And then as you survey them, it fills them in. So it becomes very easy to see which systems you haven't surveyed, which I really like. And I really wish the game would do the same thing with modifications that you have made or recipes that you've crafted because of the challenge system. So you know not to repeat or things that need to be unique. But... It doesn't work that way. So, 
It's like sometimes they got things in the game really good. And then other times they didn't. It It's a little bit bizarre to me that you would have this challenge system where you would say you've got to build five Touching unique down. weapon mods and then not annotate which mods you've already done. Especially because the game has to remember it, so it's in the code somewhere. The game knows that you've made the long barrel on a maelstrom before. But it doesn't want to display that information for you to help make your job a little bit easier and not waste resources. It's, it's one of those just baffling things. I've got a well-rested bonus for a while, so let's go. 13 hours. So Sam's going to be our partner from now on for a little while. All right, we're here. You ready? Because once we get started, I'm going to be riding your tail until this is over. All right, understood. Let's get going. There's uh, something you should know up front. I'm a co. As in Solomon Co. First man on Aquila. That tail I mentioned before, the one I think is connected to an artifact, it's something of a family legend. After planet fall, Solomon spent years mapping Aquila, and he found a tiny little patch of nothing on his sensors. The kind of nothing an artifact produces. He called it the empty nest. Said it was a place even the wildlife of Aquila wouldn't go. So we find this empty nest and then the artifact. Solomon's maps are locked up tight in the local gal bank. We'll be heading there. So we have Sam. And we have the gal bank and we have Aquila City. This is a great place to come test your FPS. <laughs> so here we go. Well... There is an event down inside there, isn't there? Okay. I think the best thing to do is leave this episode here then, and tomorrow on Sunday we'll pick up here in Aquila City and continue on with the story. So everybody, thanks for watching. If you dig it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave your questions and comments down below, and I'll see you next time. Until then, geez, burp. Happy gaming, everybody.